Coming up, Priti Patel's police crime sentencing and courts bill is actually paving the way towards a police state, literally. It gives the police unlimited powers of stop and search without just cause. It mandates jail sentences for peaceful street protests and legislates for what are basically ASBOs for anyone involved in protesting. Which is why I, Phil Morehouse, Max Robespierre, Michael Lambert and other YouTubers in the anti-government community have serious concerns that what we do could soon be deemed illegal by this fascistic Home Secretary. Stay tuned. I was reading about the military junta in Myanmar earlier today and how they're strangling democracy by locking up Aung San Suu Kyi and other anti-government protesters. Priti Patel's Police Crime Sentencing and Courts Bill reads more like a piece of legislation enacted by the Myanmar junta than the Westminster Parliament. I'm not exaggerating here. Patel's policing bill removes fundamental democratic rights and gives the police sweeping new powers to stop and search anyone without just cause. These are powers the police didn't even ask for. Patel claims they've been consulted at every stage of drafting the legislation, but the police federation say they provided no input to the bill whatsoever prior to its first reading in the House of Commons. These are police powers that the police don't need and weren't asking for. The bill was already outrageously draconian in the form in which it was passed in the Commons, but after that stage, and prior to it passing up to the House of Lords, Pritla Patel summarily added a bunch of really scary amendments for the final stages of the bill's progress. More anti-protest powers, and even wider powers of stop and search, and all done at the last minute, at the stage of a bill where it was guaranteed to attract least attention from the media and campaigners for democracy. In its current form, the policing bill effectively criminalises the act of protest, allowing police to break up a protest if it is creating noise that could cause serious unease, alarm or distress to a single passerby which covers every protest ever. One complaint from a bystander gives the police the power to take steps to end the protest. This is not hyperbole. If this law passes onto the statute books in its current form, that is the end of peaceful protest in the UK and a hammer blow to what remains of our broken democracy. And where are all the thunderous statements of disapproval from libertarian MPs? You know the ones, the ones that believe mask wearing and lockdown rules are outrageous infringements of civil liberties. Your David Davises, your Jacob Rees Smugs, your Steve Bakers and pretty much all of the anti-EU ERG group of Tory MPs eerily quiet when it comes to these civil liberties being stripped away. Just a bunch of hypocrites. But these restrictions on the right to protest go even further when you take a closer look at the proposed legislation. I mentioned the expanded stop and search powers earlier, and these are also connected with the curtailment of protests. Currently under the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984, police can use stop and search powers if they have reasonable grounds for suspecting someone is carrying specified items or something which could be used to violate specific laws like burglary or theft. But with this new bill, Patel is massively expanding the laws included in these police powers so that the police will now be able to use stop and search tactics to avoid perceived public nuisance or serious disruption, whatever that may mean in the mind of your average police constable. Stop and search can be deployed whether or not the constable has any grounds for suspecting that the person is carrying a prohibited object. It's pretty obvious that these police powers are being granted to be used to prevent activists from even reaching a protest. Carrying a placard or a banner could be seen as being evidence of intention to incite a public nuisance or serious disruption. And if the activist refuses to be stopped and searched during a protest, well, Pritla Patel's legislation punishes them with a jail term not exceeding 51 weeks, nearly a year in prison for doing something that's been legal in this country for centuries. And when I say activist, I'm falling into a government trap because I'm using that word to mean anyone taking part in protest activities. So that activist could easily be 
Tory voting Auntie Mabel, protesting about the closure of her local hospital. Or Tory voting Uncle Kevin, protesting about raw sewage being dumped in his favourite fly fishing spot. This bill should concern every British citizen of any political stripe. Protesters have throughout history used techniques such as locking themselves to railings or attaching themselves to each other and to public property, but these actions would now be illegal and also carry that 51-week prison sentence. Auntie Mabel and Uncle Keith could already be in trouble for creating any noise that disturbed an onlooker, but if they went so far as to attach themselves to a railing or to each other, well, I hope they like porridge. But Patel's legislation gets even more horrific. I mentioned ASBOs earlier, the famous antisocial behaviour orders that were issued to people telling them what you could and couldn't do. And if you did what you were told you couldn't do, you got arrested and were punished. Things like graffiti, vandalism, playing loud music at night, they could all result in an ASBO being issued. Pritla Patel's new legislation borrows from the ASBO playbook and creates something called a SDPO, a Serious Disruption Prevention Order. Basically, an ASBO for anyone convicted of a protest-related offence. So how it works is, if Auntie Mabel or Uncle Kevin did actually get convicted of an offence during their local protest, they would automatically be issued with an SDPO, telling them what they could and couldn't do in the future at risk of an automatic balance of probabilities conviction if they were caught breaching the order. So, for example, if Auntie Mabel was later found carrying a banner under her coat, she could be convicted of a crime, poor old girl. Or if Uncle Kevin was found in the future with so much as a padlock and chain in his pocket, Potential jail time for you, me old mate. It's a truly horrific attack on the personal freedom of any citizen, not just your hardened protesters. Because once the order is imposed, it eradicates that person's future rights to freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. Those issued with an SDPO can be forced to report to the authorities whenever the courts wish, and as frequently as they like. They must present themselves to a particular person at a particular place at particular times on particular days. They can also be prohibited from being at a certain place, or possessing certain items, or participating in certain activities, or socialising with certain people. They can be blocked from using the internet to encourage people to carry out activities related to a protest. If I attended a protest and was issued with an SDPO and then used the Truth to Power YouTube channel to publicise a demonstration, I could be found in breach of the order and end up in jail for 51 weeks. This is a direct challenge not just to the right of assembly but on the right to free speech. Poland, Hungary, China and Myanmar probably wouldn't blink an eye at this sort of legislation, but is this what Britain, under this Home Secretary, has become? Even I couldn't imagine this type of draconian legislation being enacted under even Cameron or, or even Thatcher. But this quite extraordinarily authoritarian Home Secretary, while at the same time condemning asylum seekers and refugees to watery graves, appears to be systematically destroying our rights to protest, our rights to freedom of speech, with the mute acquiescence of the parliamentary Tory party and a compliant media.